Hello, it's Dr. Mike here again with another tutorial on medical 3D printing. Uh, today we're going to be learning how to create a 3D printable skull file using free software uh, on the Windows platform. We will be using uh, Blender, Mesh Mixer, and a software package called 3D Slicer. All three of these software programs are free. <clears throat> and this is a picture of the model that will uh, complete uh, during this tutorial and you'll be able to 3D print at the end. So if you haven't already, uh, download the file pack that is associated with this tutorial. There's a link below if you're watching the video uh, or if you're watching the uh, video embedded in the tutorial page, it's on the tutorial page. The file pack contains the DICOM image set that we are going to use to create this uh, 3D printable skull. So uh, be sure to download that and follow along. So start off by uh, opening 3D Slicer. If you uh, haven't uh, downloaded 3D Slicer, you can download it from slicer.org. Um, and it is a free open source software package for medical image research. <clears throat> if you've downloaded the file pack, you'll have the DICOM folder that uh, contains the image set we're going to be using. Just drag and drop that onto the 3D Slicer welcome window and uh, select load directly into the DICOM database and uh, copy the files. And then what will happen is <clears throat> your files will get copied into the DICOM database and uh, then we'll be able to process them in Slicer. Now Slicer is a great software program. It's used for a lot of uh, medical imaging research and it's a wonderful thing that the Slicer team has uh, made it freely available uh, for download. And as I mentioned before, it is open source. Okay, so once our DICOM image set is loaded, uh, select this uh, study TCGA065410, that's our skull file, and click on the load button and you'll see that uh, we uh, have our skull uh, CT scan which is loaded into Slicer. Uh, you should have this viewport. If you don't have it, uh, select uh, the 4-up viewport um, uh, configuration from uh, this uh, menu setting over here. From the uh, basic 4-up uh, view, we're going to go to Volume Rendering from the Modules drop-down menu. Select Volume Rendering. There's a little eyeball over here next to Volume, so we're going to turn that on, and that's going to turn on the 3D rendering. Now you'll notice that the 3D render is not centered. This little crosshair right over here will center the uh, uh, object on the scene, so click on that. And now our uh, CT skull is centered. Uh, we'll select a preset and I like to select this third preset, uh, CT bone, and then slide uh, this uh, slider uh, to the right until everything looks uh, looks appropriate. And you can use the right mouse button to zoom in and the left mouse button to rotate your 3D render. So uh, that looks pretty good. So I'm happy with that uh, uh, appearance of my uh, 3D model. Next I'm going to go to Editor. Right here again, select Editor from the uh, uh, Modules drop-down. Um, generic Anatomy Colors is fine. Just click Apply. And this will take you to the uh, Editor Tool Panel. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select the bone and create something called a label map. So that will, uh, in a later step, tell Slicer to create a 3D surface model which we can export into the STL file format uh, from the label map. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is click this button. This is the Threshold Effect tool and it allows me to use uh, basically CT density, so Hounsfield attenuation, uh, which is the technical term, to uh, select um, my target structure and I'm going to want to click on this uh, rectangle that's green and choose bone and uh, now everything that will be selected is going to be 
blinking in this yellow-orange color. Now, for this particular CT scan, uh, the bone density is about 1,250. That's about 1,000 units higher than it typically is. Uh, and I think it had to do with um, some technical glitch on the scanner. But usually bone is about 250 Hounsfield units or above. But in this case, I have to type 1,250. So if you're following along with the um, DICOM image set in the file pack, set your lower threshold range to 1,250, leave your upper threshold range the same, and you'll see that the bone is now pretty well selected. And if you scroll back and forth, you can see that that looks like a pretty good um, approximation of just the, the bony structures of our skull. And we will click Apply. And now we have uh, created a, um, a label map, which is basically a representation of what is bone and what isn't. And we're going to use that to create our surface model in the next step. Now, click on uh, this little icon over here. It looks like a, uh, um, a mesh. And it's called the Make Model Effect Tool. So click on that. And what this is going to do is, uh, it's going to take our label map, which is uh, made of bone, and create a surface model from it. So it's already selected. Uh, we had labeled our uh, our bone as uh, label two, which is um, which is bone. So it's already selected. Click the apply button, and what it's doing now is it's generating this in the background, and you'll see that when it's completed. Uh, the 3D rendering will will change appearance and it takes probably about 10 or 15 seconds and it would be nice if the software had a like a progress bar or something so that uh, you knew when it was done uh, there it is it just finished uh, unfortunately there's no progress bar so you just have to kind of keep an eye on this 3D rendering um, so now we have our surface model and we're ready to export that uh, into an STL file format so to do that, go to the Save button in the upper uh, left-hand side of the uh, upper nav bar. And you have an option to save all kinds of stuff here. But we don't need everything. So I'm going to unselect everything, uncheck everything, and just check this last one uh, called bone.vtk. And the file format that I want is STL. And then the folder I want it to be in is on my desktop and it's called tutorial there it is and choose that folder now if I click Save the bone file is going to be saved in STL format in that folder it's going to be called bone.stl so click Save there and here if we look in that folder there's my new STL file so I'm gonna go ahead and quit quit slicer um, now, you may be tempted to go ahead and just send this to the 3D printer uh, because 3D printers usually will accept STL files, but it is not ready to 3D print as of yet. There are a lot of um, problems with the mesh, uh, and the mesh needs to be cleaned up before it can be printed. And so the next program that you're going to want to do uh, use to clean that up is Blender. Uh, so go ahead and open Blender. If you don't have Blender, you can download it from blender.org. Um, and Blender is a uh, free open source software package that's primarily used for 3D uh, CGI animation and also uh, for some types of, um, of uh, computer-aided design. But it's really uh, it has a very powerful set of mesh editing tools and it's free so you can't complain about that. Uh, when you first open Blender there's a cube that's in the middle of the scene by default. Hit the X key and then the D key to delete it. We're going to import our STL file so go to File, Import, and STL and navigate to that folder that um, that we were in and select the bone.stl uh, file that we just created in 3D Slicer and import it. And this is a relatively big file. It's 150 megabytes, uh, 1.5 million vertices. 
Uh, so this is a highly detailed uh, mesh file and uh, so Blender will take about 10 or 20 seconds to import it. Um, and when it's first imported you'll notice that the object is not centered. So um, whenever you import a medical scan file into Blender it's always off-centered. I'm not sure why but it's easily fixed. Go to the object menu in the lower left hand corner select transform and geometry to origin and that will get centered and you'll notice that we're really zoomed in right now and uh, this is because um, Blender uh, converts every millimeter of um, of the file into something called a Blender unit which is the internal unit of distance and because the skull is you know quite a many many millimeters in size um, it uh, looks quite big but we zoom out using the scroll wheel and uh, now we can see our skull and there's some problems with the skull there's see all these little islands of mesh or bone over here on the side these were captured when we um, use the Hounsfield attenuation in the CT scan in order to select a surface model and the other thing is that you can see the scan lines um, you know it's very very much ridged and uh, uh, there's this kind of stair step uh, artifact um, and that's something that we want to get rid of and Blender is a really good program for getting rid of that so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these bone islands so this is, this is going to take a minute or two go to edit mode by selecting it from the um, mode menu in the lower left hand corner and um, then what will happen is you'll in edit mode within Blender this is the mode that allows you to edit individual uh, mesh elements vertices faces and I'm going to when it first starts off everything is in orange that means every vertex is selected so I'm going to right click anywhere on your mesh doesn't matter where and select a single vertex uh, so I've just selected a random one right on the forehead here now hit control L and what this will do is it will select all of the vertices that are contiguous with this one vertex and turn them all orange so there you go so now everything that's connected to that first thing you selected is now highlighted and all those little bone islands that we want to get rid of are not highlighted so to select those we're going to invert our selection it's easy hit control I control I and the selection is now inverted and now that we have all the stuff that we want to get rid of selected we can delete it so hit the X key and select vertices or you can hit the V key if you don't want to use your mouse and all of those extraneous mesh islands will be deleted so uh, that's almost 90,000 uh, I don't know if you saw that, but it was almost 90,000 vertices that we just got rid of in one fell swoop. So that's a pretty efficient way to uh, clean up a lot of uh, extraneous mesh. Okay, so we still have the problem of the very rough appearance of the skull. So what I'm going to do is apply a smoothing function to the skull. And functions are called modifiers in Blender so click on this wrench uh, in the upper right hand corner in the right hand uh, nav panel and this will allow me to add a modifier to this object so the one I want is called smooth it's under the deform column do not select Laplacian smooth that's something different we want just regular smooth so select that and then it gives you some uh, uh, variables that you can adjust for repeat just leave everything the same but for repeat hit 30 type in 30 and you'll see that it will basically run the smoothing algorithm on the skull 30 times and it'll smooth out all those ridges that looks pretty good actually so um, pretty happy with that I'm going to click the apply button don't forget to click the apply button to make the changes permanent. Alright, 
So next, I'm going to export my now smoothed and cleaned up skull file back to STL. So I'm going to click File, Export, STL. Go back to my tutorial. And I'm going to name this one Bone Smooth uh, because we smoothed it out here. And I'm going to click on Export STL. And Blender will now export my cleaned up um, file uh, into that folder. And again, it's rather large, and so it takes uh, about 10 or 15 seconds or so. All right. Now, there it is. It's called Bone Smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and close out Blender. And uh, do you want to really want to quit? Yeah. The final um, program to open is Mesh Mixer, which is a free software program that's uh, published by Autodesk. Um, and um, you can download it from MeshMixer.com. So just open up Mesh Mixer, click Import, and select that bone smooth file that we just created. Now Mesh Mixer is a really great software program because it allows you to do some uh, error checking before sending something to the 3D printer. Uh, it however doesn't have um, all of the features for smoothing out and modifying the mesh that um, Blender has, so I prefer to do that in Blender. So if you want to rotate your file, use the right mouse button in Mesh Mixer. And what we're going to do is go to Analysis and Inspector. So it's right over here. And what Inspector will do is uh, it will tell you if there are any defects in the mesh, if there are disconnected bone islands, um, what are called manifold defects, so holes in the mesh, uh, all those kind of problems that will will cause a 3D print to fail if you send it to a printer. And, uh, and actually this is looking pretty good. There are no errors. So I've done this final check with Mesh Mixer and it's shown that my mesh is good to go without any errors. If there were errors I could click Auto Repair All and it would probably fix about 99 to 100 percent of them. So that's it. I am done. Um, my 3D model is uh, now ready to go to the printer. And you can see here I actually took that file and printed it out and these are a few of the pictures what it looked like. Uh, I hope that you have found this tutorial to be helpful. Uh, again, this allows you to create a 3D printable uh, file from a medical scan um, in a very short period of time, but more importantly using free software. Uh, there are some proprietary software solutions out there that will do the same thing and they will charge you five figures um, per year as a license fee, but you can do it with free software and uh, that's a really a great thing. Um, if you are uh, interested in 3D printing uh, please uh, engage and on the embodied.com website there are some forums that you can ask or answer questions on. You can download 3D models that other people have designed and 3D print them yourself or if you are interested you can share uh, your 3D models as well. Uh, so thank you very much. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. Um, please consider sharing uh, your work with the members of the Embodied community and happy 3D printing.